Hello everybody, my name is Daniel Richardson, and I'm the WCPW Review Guy. Is it sad that I have literally listened to the new Taylor Swift single like 10 times? Love it, can't get enough of it. And anyway, this is the WCPW World Cup Finals Review. Guys, six months, six months, like 64 wrestlers, 65 if you count Joseph Connors' late entry. What was it like 15 countries like this has been epic and it's been building here we are world cup week we're capping it off right now with the finals oh man i i don't even know what to say like literally at this point it has just been like oh it's been like i know i don't know i don't think this is their wrestlemania in wcpw but it certainly felt like it you know what i mean like it just felt like a huge deal like i don't know it was just it was epic Let's get into it, shall we? Let's just jump right into this thing. The first match, it is the uh, Pro Wrestling World Cup semifinal match, uh, Kushida versus Joseph Connors. And uh, man, the crowd super split here. Like, one I thought they'd be. I don't know, I guess I was just expecting them to really be more, uh, I guess, British. You know, they were just like, England. But uh, no, I think they were a lot like me, just love wrestling. In fact, I was talking to somebody, uh, over the weekend, I can't remember uh, what day it was, but they were like, you know, who you got in the Final Four, and of course I was like, Osprey, and they're like, oh really, I figured you'd go Ricochet just because, you know, USA, and I'm like, no, 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 it's not even a country thing, it's just like wrestling, I'm, I love wrestling, so, you know, apparently the crowd's with me on that one, the pro wrestling crowd, so I love it. Uh, one of my little favorite moments here is Connor, he does a little springboard leap over DT that he tries to do, here, Kushida catches him with the armbar, and I was like, yes! Like, that was just, I just hadn't seen that kind of counter to the uh, leaping, jumping over D, or the fuck he calls it. I just don't see it very often. Uh, here, uh, Connors, you know, he eventually hits the uh, don't look down, but Kushida gets out of it. Uh, at one point, you know, you'll forget the don't look down, and Kushida gets him into the uh, hoverboard lock. And that was basically the story in this entire thing, was just him working the arm over, trying to hit that hoverboard lock. He eventually hits the... Um, Suplex with the uh, or what not off top ropes this time, it's just a regular suplex with the hoverboard lock, but he keeps it cinched in there. And uh, Connors eventually passes out, and uh, yeah, out Kashida moves on. Uh, so I was like, yeah, uh, really good match, really enjoyed it. Uh, moving on now to the match I thought was gonna be my match of the night because this was this freaking epic. It's the other uh, pro wrestling world cup semi final match Ricochet versus Will Ospreay. As soon as Osprey hits the ring, it goes right after Ricochet. Like, none of this, like, standing in opposite corners and a handshake and didn't look. No, no. They went right to it. Freaking loved it. Flippy shit was all around in that first portion of the match. However, these guys, and I've noticed this with each match I've watched of theirs, they change it up quite a bit. Because even though it starts off, for lack of a better term, flippy shit, it goes straight into almost like a power game. And, like, Ricochet and uh, Osprey, they end up... Uh, brawling up to the stage where Ricochet hits him with a brain buster and then just goes right back in there. And I love that. Very realistic. Like, why would you keep beating him up and then drag him back? Like, fuck it. Get the count out victory. So he goes back into the ring and he waits. And of course, Will Ospreay gets up to his feet and he's stumbling down there and he's already like at seven. And he's only midway there and then of course he just takes off in a sprint. Ricochet realizes that, you know what? Ospreay will probably make it back in in time. So he cuts him off. Suicide dive. Takes him down. Ah. Oh, Freaking awesome. Loved it. Uh, here, Ricochet was definitely kind of playing more heel, I guess. Like, they were both faces, and I get that. And, of course, the crowd liked both. But it definitely seemed like uh, Ricochet was being way more cockier. Like, I don't know what he's like outside WCPW. You know, Lucha Underground, whatever else he wrestles, Ring of Honor. Uh, here, he's always been fairly face. Like, even, you know, he's a little bit cockiness here and there. But for the most part face and here he was just straight up arrogant like in his attack of Will Ospreay. Uh, Ospreay looking very weak uh, throughout this thing. I don't mean you know weak but you know he was beaten down quite a bit and you knew that was going to happen like I, I already knew Ospreay was going to the finals. Uh, honestly thought Ospreay was going to win the whole thing but I was like that's what's going to happen. He's going to get just destroyed here and then like barely make it to the finals and then of course somehow resiliently come back. So uh, yeah I was not surprised at all. In fact it, even the finish was just kind of out of nowhere. He just kind of hits him with like a little roll, Victor Roll kind of roll. One, two, three, Osprey wins. And of course, Ricochet is just extremely pissed, but you know, hey, it happens. So, uh, so there it is. The main event for the night is set Kushida versus Will Ospreay. So, uh, we got some other matches thrown in there. Uh, 
Up next, a little exhibition here. It's uh, Mike Bailey going against uh, Penta L0M. And uh, yeah, both guys was, you know, they hit to the quarterfinals, but that was it. They're right into there. So uh, yeah, they just fought here. Uh, Penta had kind of the upper hand throughout uh, at one point. Uh, Power or power power bombing uh, Bailey on the edge of the ring, which looked freaking brutal. Uh, Bailey keeps going for that moonsault or shooting star knee drop, and I, I, the only thing that kind of bugs me about it is, and don't get me wrong, it looks impressive, and I'm sure it. And it might not sound sarcastic. I know it takes a lot of skill to pull it off, but he takes forever to do it. Like the guy will be down, and he'll get up there, and he'll get his footing, and then he. And I'm like, dude, just move. Like, and like, whenever they do roll all the way, it looks okay because it's like, well, yeah, you took way too much time. But like, when he does hit it, I'm just like, how? Like, that guy could have easily. And it's just, it's that awkward. Like, they always get in the same up on fours position in the corner for him to hit it in the corner. It, it just takes you back to like the six one nine or when Booker T would kick or use the scissor kick. You know, the setup both moves required, you know, the wrestler to be in a certain position and hold that position for a ridiculous amount of time. It's a position they never hold in any other match. I have never seen a wrestler draped over that second rope as much in any match as they are when they fight Rey Mysterio. I have never seen a wrestler get kicked in the stomach and then just hold it there for seconds on end in any other match except when they're fighting Booker T. And here I have never seen a wrestler literally just crawl to the corner on all fours and stop right there as much as I have since they fight Mike Bailey. These are little gripes, but the, you know, just this little observations I'm making here. Uh, anyways, uh, he kept going for that, and uh, of course, he, he kept missing. Which I'm not gonna lie, a part of me is glad he was missing because well, I'm just like, dude, Penta is way too smart for this. There's no way like he's just gonna be like, oh, I'm wore out. I'm just gonna stay right here. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep staying here. <sighs> I don't know what Bailey's doing right now, but I know I'm getting a breath. Oh, this is great. Oh shit, needs to, you know, it just, it, it looked ridiculous. So I was always glad when Penta rolled out of the way. At one point he goes for a, I think he, I can't remember if he's going for that move or if he was going for a, it's a moonsault or whatever. But anyways, Penta's already up and just like fucking super kicks him like right in the stomach. Ah, oh, it was awesome. Loved it. Anyways, uh, and of course the other little part of this match was uh, they kept trying to perform like, you know, high impact moves on the apron, uh, including the fear factor, which, you know, Bailey luckily got out of that. Uh, eventually, though, he couldn't get out of it, uh, the fear factor in the middle of the ring, one, two, three, Penta wins, Penta wins, and uh, yeah, that was that. was that. Decent match, it was a decent match, I just, you know, I'm just tired of the everybody on all fours waiting for knees in the back. Uh, next match, now this is a match when I did my preview uh, video yesterday, or day before, uh, I totally forgot about this match, this was announced ahead of time, and I just slipped my mind, but this was uh, the match for the Magnificent Seven briefcase, uh, Rampage going up against El Ligero. Um Hey, that, I don't know what, I can't remember what happened to that briefcase, dude, like, the one side is just completely caved in, like, perfectly caved in, like, one side is just smushed in there. Uh, I can't remember, I'm sure someone got hit with it at some point, I just forget about it or whatever, but either way, it just, it's fun. I don't know, fucking Ligero stands on that thing all the time, I'm sure he finally broke it in. Uh, anyways, De decent match. This is more of a comedy match because it's just Rampage beating the shit out of Laguerre and Laguerre like trying to beat up on Rampage. And <sighs> here's my issue right now. Okay, so my issue early on was always that I thought Laguerre was a little too goofy, played to the crowd too much. And I mean, it fits his character. I get it. He, you know, he's the Mexican sensation. He's you know, you know, for the crowd. He's here to entertain the people. And a lot of times it would just be like. I'm like, dude, just beat the, like, you get the guy down, quit playing to the crowd, win, you know, because I'm just, I'm pure sometimes, sometimes, uh, I'm okay with Daryl being a live entity, giving fist bumps to James R. Kennedy, that's, that's fine, that's fucking normal, but whenever you're out there trying to win a competitive match, and you're playing to the crowd and losing matches to Grado, I'm a little upset, uh, so I was always just kind of like, uh, he just, he's just, he's too goofy for me to take too seriously, like, I love El Aguero, I'm a fan of El Aguero, but I just, I can't quite jump on the bandwagon fully like I do with other wrestlers. And then, before the heel turn, he starts showing this aggressive streak that I really liked. I was like, yes. And then he turned heel, and I was like, fucking A. Like, now we're going to get it. Like, now it's just going to be hardcore Liguero. And he started off being just straight up, but now he's going back to Goofy. Like, he's throwing shitty kicks, and he's just like, I knocked him out. I was like, dude, you didn't even see him budge. Like, there's no way you thought in your mind that he's weak after that. He's turning around like, yeah. And he turns around and gets, like, clobbered by Rampage. And I'm just like... Really, like, I'm looking at this from a strictly kayfabe point. Like, maybe Laguerre was just stupid. Like, maybe that's, like, look, 
you know, great skills in the ring, occasionally get a job done. Maybe he's just stupid. Like, maybe he's, you know, like funny stupid. You know, like most Rob Williams characters, just kind of, you know. Uh, but just, yeah, I don't know. I just don't get it. Uh, just constantly doing dumb stuff that, like, he thinks it's going to work. Like, what was it? The match, oh, the, the six way, or sorry, the six man tag match. He tried to, like, try to choke slam two people. And I'm like, come on. Like, yeah, it's a funny moment. I'm laughing. But I'm like, at the same time, like, this is really dumb. Like, maybe BT Gun is getting tired of shit. Like, that's what I want to see. If I could you know, how WCPW should book, you know, this angle. I would literally just have, like, you know, the Prestige seriously get tired of shit. And, like, he even loses the briefcase at one point. Like, he'll lose it, like, down the road because he's doing dumb shit like this. And the, the Prestige's like, listen, you was only in the group because we had, you know, we won the briefcase, we want to keep you close, whatever. You're not even a threat to us. They kick him out. And then the serious, you know, climb, you know, begin. Much like Martin Kirby. And the thing is, like, Kirby still does goofy stuff, but it seems like he's very serious when he gets in the ring. Legero just, I don't know, he's just more on the goofy side of things. But either way, I mean, what's it? This was not a bad match. I enjoyed it. And it was funny. I, I mean, I'm almost in here, I, I'd be lying. I was like, I didn't find it humorous. No, I, I was laughing. I thought it was funny. But at the same time, it's like, this makes no sense. Like, how's, how's he in the prestige again? Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, and at the time, it's like Rampage. It's, it's against his character, too. I'm like, dude, he should have just, just demolished him. Like, I've seen this guy go through, like, hell with Primate in the Best of Seven series. And now Legero goofing off in front of him. He don't just, like, clobber his fucking face in. Like, no, I'm sorry. Am I taking it too seriously? I probably am. I'm going to get the same shit I get whenever, like, I bash Kenny Williams for rolling around. Everybody's like, you just don't get it, man. He's entertaining the fans. It's, 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 shut up. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, I don't know. As I'm watching, I'm just like, dude, Rampage, just beat him. Just, like, just fucking punch him in the face. Like, just punch him until his face goes liquid. And then pin him. And then... You get briefcase, but no, he's just like, I'm going to keep goofing off with him. I'll just kind of throw him around and get chuckle as well. And then it match ends when, you know, the girl comes with the briefcase and he's just like, oh, I'm not going to hit you. And he hands it to the guy, to the ref. Because I'm guessing the briefcase isn't necessarily like a title, technically. The stipulation was the winner gets the briefcase. So I would assume if the girl lost by count or disqualification, the briefcase should change hands. It's not a title. It's a briefcase. Oh, it's an object, I'm just saying. But either way, he hands the, the briefcase over to the ref. So whenever the ref, or no, I'm sorry, uh, I think he had the Rampage. Either way, Rampage gives it to the ref, and when he turns around, kicking the dick, small package, Legero wins. Which Rampage no-sells immediately afterwards, because as soon as like Legero's in the you know aisle way and he's holding the briefcase and just went through hell, like Rampage just like, I got kicking the dick, but who gives a shit? What the fuck happened here? I'm just like, I don't know, I don't know. I'm a bitter old man. I'm a grandpa, guys. I'm a grandpa watching professional wrestling. Oh, I apologize. Uh, so yeah, Legero wins. Uh, up next, uh, Adam Blompier comes out to make a brief but awesome announcement. So apparently Marty Skrull's still pissed. I always butcher that last name. I try to say it really fast and so no one notices, but I just, I, I kill that name every time. Uh, the villain uh, is kind of pissed at War Machine. Not pissed at the Prestige for beating him down. He's pissed at the War Machine for leaving him behind. I'm like, dude, you're the idiot who stayed behind the ring, but whatever. Uh... Like, you had to know that was going to happen. I'm the villain. I'll hang out in the ring. Can't blame War Machine. But he's playing War Machine. So, uh, a match has been made. Uh, the first match for Refuse to Lose, the next iPay-Per-View that WCPW is putting on. Tag title match. It's going to be War Machine defending against the Young Bucks. Holy shit. That is awesome right there. Like, this is just... Oh, it's brilliant. I, I, I can't say enough about it. Really looking forward to it. That's worth the price of admission right there alone. Yeah, that match already has potential to be, you know, match of the night. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be awesome. Up next, it is the uh, uh, number one contender uh, match for the internet title. And I, they didn't specify when the time match happens. So I don't know if it's going to be at Refuse to Lose or if it's going to happen before then or whatever. But it's uh, Alex Gracie versus Zack Sabre Jr. And I was really worried about this initially. Don't get me wrong. You know, I understand Gracie needs to be pushed. So a part of me was just like, yeah, if Gracie wins, it makes sense. Uh, you know, give him the internet title, have him run with it for a while. I get it. But at the same time, it's like, man, Zach just lost the quarterfinal match. He was my favorite to go all the way, and he didn't. I was like, man, I really want Sabre to win this thing. Uh, this thing started off, and I think that's the thing, too, is a lot of people didn't quite expect Gracie to be, 
because once again, he kind of suffers that curse of like he was so goofy early on that no one takes him seriously as a competitor now. And once again, he has that MMA background. I mean, I think he's shown that he can get the job done in the ring. Uh, I mean, look at it from a K-Pape standpoint. He took a jumping tombstone from Matt Riddle and got up and continued to win the match. Uh, he's devious. He knows how to cheat to win all that stuff. So, I mean, he's a very formidable opponent, especially for Zack Sabre. And remember, you know, Gabriel Kidd defeated Zack Sabre at one point. So, it's like... Uh, no one. Wait, did Gabriel Kidd beat Zack Sabre? He did be. Didn't he beat? I can't remember. Maybe they didn't beat him. Maybe I, maybe I'm, I'm I'm messed that up. He fought him and he went we went the distance with him. But I don't think he beat him. I got my notes. It's in the other room. I'll, I'll check it later. Either way, uh, you know Zack Sabre. You know he he's he's mortal. He's he's a mortal man. He 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 can be beaten as we've seen recently, especially like it seems like he's been kind of on a losing streak here in WCW. Uh, so anyways, it's you know. Him and Alex Gracie, it was, to me, I, when I was watching, I was like, this is a pretty evenly matched thing. But I just don't think the crowd thought so at all. Like, I think the crowd was just kind of like, Sabre should just be dominating this thing. Because it seemed like anytime Gracie had some offense, they just didn't care at all. Um, anyways, early on, they kind of get into kind of a heated shoving match and, you know, getting nose to nose and everything. But, uh, like, Sabre, you know, he showing that Gracie's getting a little too big for his britches, brings him down by the arm, and then, of course, stomps that elbow. And it just looked brutal. Like, I... I did the wincing. I did that, like, whenever uh, Marty Scroll like, breaks someone's fingers. I do that same, like, oh, same thing. Like, it just looked so brutal when he stomped that elbow right there. I was like, son of a bitch. Uh, anyways, uh, he, uh, at one point, Gracie, he went for, it looked like he went for, like, an Alabama slam, but he just kind of dropped straight down, like, a, what would you call it, like, an inverted tombstone? Like, a opposite tombstone? I don't know what the fuck you call that. That was awesome. And I was like, dude, he's got a one right there, but... Not to be, so you try to put him away at the fall from Gracie. However, uh, Zack Sabre countered into a, a super hold, choke hold, whatever you want to call it, choke out in the clutch. I don't know. He fucking put him down. And then, of course, the guy himself wrapped around. And then he kind of, you know, quickly switched over into like a dragon sleeper kind of thing. Of course, he's got him all, you know, twisted up like a pretzel, anyways. And it didn't take long. Gracie tapped out. So, Zack Sabre going up against uh, Gabriel Kidd at some point in the future for the internet title. And I'll be honest with you, I want Zack Sabre to win. I love Kidd. Kid, I love you. You know this is true. Uh, I think, you know, you had a good run. And once again, because, like, you know, I do the top ten every week. I got your entire win-loss thing. Like, those wins are coming back up. Like, you know, when I do that, when I tally everybody's win-loss record, you know, you were always at the bottom. Like, even when you started winning, you were still way down there because you had so many lo lo or losses outweighing the wins. But now you're up in the middle. And I'm like, dude, you're good. Like, you're you're not bad anymore. Like, no one thinks you're an underdog anymore. Like, I don't anyways. Uh, I, you know, I think he's a serious competitor right now. You got clean wins over big names already, so it's like, no, you're doing good, bro. So uh, I, I think Zack Saber, I, not, Zach Saber don't need it. I just want him. That. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Like, it's not a need. Zack Saber don't need shit. He didn't need the World Cup. He, he's Zack Saber Jr. I just want him to have it. You know. So same thing with the internet tie. He doesn't need it. But I would love to see him have it because I think. It, I like to see him do what Cody Rhodes did with it, where he takes the belt with him. Now, maybe you know uh, Gabriel Kidd's doing it too. I don't know. It's not as uh, highly publicized on WCPW uh, YouTube channel, but I would love to see like Zack Saber take it and just like travel with it, and you know, or always bring it back, obviously, and defend it on our TV. But I can see him take it, you know, worldwide with him and just you know, d you know, fight everybody, fight all comers. I would love to see that. But uh, yeah, Zack Saber wins. Damn good match. Uh, really loved it. Up next. The WC, uh, WCPW title match, uh, Jack Swagger going up against Joe Hendry. Uh, this match seems to get a lot of hate. I was noticing like everybody crapping on this, and I thought it was a fine match. It didn't blow me away. It wasn't like epic, but it was still a good match. Uh, and you know, for the most part, Jack Swagger kind of taking it to Hendry early on until they go outside. And of course, that's when Hendry kind of shined a little bit, threw him into the guardrail several times, and because uh, that's when Hendry can get you. When you're outside, he'll he'll. He'll just, you know, he'll, time can turn like that, and it did. Uh, however, in the ring, the Swagger eventually comes back, and they start kind of trading the ankle lock. Like, you know, one person gets the ankle lock on, then the other guy get out, and he'll throw the other one on him. And then at one point, they're both together. They're doing, like, a double ankle lock onto each other. It's kind of kind of crazy. And then the ending happened. Now, I'm okay with the, the, the match results. And that means he's out of the way right now. Hendry ends up getting the ankle lock, and then he gets the other ankle, and he goes for like this double ankle lock thing. And of course, he's you know cinching it in and everything, and then Jack Swagger taps out, and I'm fine with that. Uh, people were upset that Swagger tapped out and was made to look kind of weak. I think that was one of the big complaints, and I was okay with that. That didn't bother me because I'm thinking to myself a couple of things. A, 
I don't think he's going to be a full-time. That's one thing that really bugged me about WCPW in the early days was they would just bring in big names. Which Don't get me wrong, that's great for business, but it's like at the expense of your own people. It was like, hey, he's coming back. He's you know, This guy's here. He's big. Big name. Oh, you're not going to beat him. He's going to stomp you, and then he's going to leave, and we'll never see him again. And that's how it goes. And initially, I remember even being a little kind of, uh, that uh, Cody Rhodes won the TV title, but then he, or sorry, the internet title, but he really did a lot for WCPW with his run as uh, internet champion. And the fact that he was, to me, he became a WCPW regular. Like, you know, people can still call him an outsider if you want. To me, uh, granted, he's missed, you know, here lately, but it's like, during his run as internet champion, he was a regular. I mean, he, he earned that. And I just don't know if Swagger was going to do the same. I just I didn't see that. I really didn't. If he does, that's awesome. Uh, but if this was going to be a one-off thing, yeah, why not put over the world champion or you know our heavyweight champion or whatever you want to call it, our company champion, the face, the top guy. Yeah, that's the way it should be. I would It would have sucked to have Swagger come in, even if it was like a DQ loss or whatever. Uh, or, you know, a DQ win, I mean, I should say, uh, just to get the Duke, just, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I won, and then leave and never come back. It's like, that doesn't help us. It doesn't help Hendry. The other thing is, yes, Hendry is playing like, you know, the chicken shit heel, but you got to remember, he got there based on his wrestling ability. He's still a dangerous man. I think that's the problem is a lot of people kind of forget that, too. They're just like, eh, you know, he's always trying to run and hide and cheese away. It's like, no, you got to remember, you know, something brought him to the dance. It was his wrestling ability that brought him to the dance. So the fact that he beat Swagger cleanly by submission, to me, I loved it. I'm good at that. I'm fine with that ending. Not a problem. The gripe I have is that move, the double ankle lock. It wasn't an like the ankle lock. Granted, I've seen people put it on pretty shitty. They just kind of hold it. Ah, oh, I got you in the ankle lock, and the guy sells it like a, you know it's the worst pain ever. And I, I accept them. Like, okay, fine. That's okay. But when you got two of them. It's like even real. You can't. You're not twisting both. It's not like you got his feet pointed that way, and then you got both of yours like pulling this way. It's like even this awkward as hell. He's just hugging both of them. Now, to me, the pain would have been more. You know, sure he's holding it like that, whatever. But it looked like he's in a Boston Crab, and I think the commentator should have played that up. Like, well, he's going for like a double Hendry lock, but. Really, you gotta think the pain's going to the back, but they didn't play it up like that. They literally just like, oh, it's a double ankle lock. Both ankles are being shattered right now. Holy shit. And it's just like, no. And it looks so ridiculous. That's my only gripe. I was happy with the match. I'm happy with the results. That last move was just ridiculous. Hendry, never use the double ankle lock again. Just don't. Unless you can perfect it. If you somehow, like, you know, cross the ankles and then kind of do this number, like twist them both like that, that would work. You were just holding them. You were just holding him like, ah, oh, did that hurt? You guys like, yeah, it hurts. I'm tapping out. I, I don't know. I, I was not I, I was not a fan of that move, and I'm sorry. Uh, but still, happy with the results. And once again, I'm glad that Hendry kept the title. And, you know, he has now he has bragging rights. I beat a former WBF champion in the ring by submission. You know, that's it. And I'm, I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. So, uh, yeah, Hendry wins, moves on. Up next, the main event, the Pro Wrestling World Cup Finals. Oh, my God. It, it's all been building to this. And I'm not going to lie. This was the match where I was just like, yes. Like, you know, shutting the door. Like, no, no, I'm not going to be interrupted all during this match. The phone. At this point, the phone's already gone. So I was afraid that if I got And I was right. As soon as, like, the match was over, I looked at my notifications. And from, like, two hours previous, because once again, I had to watch it after it already aired. Like, two hours before... There's a picture of you know, Kushida with the trophy, and I'm just like, yep, see, that's why I stayed off my phone, because they would have been ruined for me right there. Uh, but anyways, I, you know, this was, I was in the zone. Got my drinks, got everything ready to go. Didn't want to pause it. I didn't want to have the, got my restroom break out of the way. Here we go. Uh, the only thing that kind of troubled me right off the bat was the fact that uh, the South Coast Connection, that's the Dunn and Six, right? Kelly, Ashley, those two guys. South Coast. I, could, I couldn't remember what they looked like, and I, I want to say that it was who it was, but I'm not for sure. But the fact that they kind of accompanied Osprey out there, I was just like, what? Why? Why are we doing this? What, what's happening exactly? Uh, anyways, uh, much like the you know previous uh, Osprey Ricochet match, dude, Osprey just goes for it like right off the bat, just like you know what, we're going. I want that you know World Cup right here. Uh, anyways, uh, knocks a Ricochet to the or sorry, knocks a Kushida to outside and just like does like run and just clears the ropes. I love that when people do that. Clears the ropes, 
you know, hits him right there on the ground. Loved it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, at this point, you know, South Coast Connection come over to make sure they're okay. And, of course, uh, uh, Kashida goes back in there, you know, hits his own, like, top rope, whatever. I didn't write down, but it's like flattens all of them. I'm just like, yep. Like, are they, were they this just there to provide padding? Like, is that like, they're just like, hey, you gotta come out there with me. Uh, storyline doesn't make sense, doesn't matter. We just, you know, need extra people to get clobbered here. We don't have enough security guard like we did last time for the, you know, seven way ladder match. So just, just come on out of here. Uh, so yeah, battle. This, this match was awesome. Like, literally, this just is getting to the end because it was just like they were training back and forth, back and forth. Uh, another thing that kind of troubled me too, because here's what I kept thinking as I'm watching this match. This is what's going through my mind. You know, it doesn't happen. I'm just saying this is what was going through my mind. I was like, oh shit. Like, are we going to get like a Swords of Essex reboot in a way? Like, is the South Coast Connection going to be the next Swords of Essex pretty much? And then like, Osprey will be the leader of the group? Because well, it's what it's looking like. Because at one point, uh, Kushida gets knocked, you know, over the barricade. And then the South Coast Connection came over there. South, yeah, South, South Coast Connection. Uh, and they pick him up. And they're holding him in place. And I was like, this isn't very honorable. This isn't sportsmanship. This isn't befitting a World Cup final match. And then, of course, Osprey like, ends up like hitting like a 450 frog splash or whatever the fuck he hit. He jumps. He does some flippy shit into the crowd. Like, flattens all three of them. Again, they're just there for padding, I guess, but takes them all down. Uh, they get back in the ring and they keep going. Uh, Kushida, of course, keeps going for the uh, hoverboard lock. Uh, of course, Osprey's going for the Oz cutter. At one point, he even hits like a super Oz cutter. And I was like, that's it. It wasn't it. I was like, holy shit. No. Come on. It, oh, don't don't tell me. Uh, at one point, B. Priestley runs out there. There's a breath bump. And, of course, uh, B. Priestley comes out there and... Um, Grabs uh, one of Kushida's belts. I don't know if it's the uh, Ring of Honor or the IWPG, but either way, goes in there. She's going to hit Kushida, and of course, Will Ospreay stops her. And then she's like, Well, here, you hit him then. And he had that moment. And once again, I'm just like, Don't do this. Like, this is, I don't want to see it end like this, nor do I want to see Kushida win by like a quick roll up or something like that. Like, you know, just get out of the ring. And of course, he escorts her out of the ring, which I love. Like, yeah, handle your girl, get her out of there. And they go back, and it doesn't affect the match at all. They keep fighting. Uh, once again, trading near falls, uh, and of course, it, it ends with the Back to the Future. Kushida gets up the victory. One, two, three. He's the new World Cup champion. Oh, and you know what? I'm I was happy with it. I'm okay with it. It's it, you know honestly, from a kayfabe standpoint, it makes tons of sense. The guy he's got uh, worldwide success. He's an international superstar at this point. Why not add another accolade? I will say the only thing that kind of, mm, his only connection to WCPW is this tournament. He only came in during the tournament. Sure, he's had some non-tournament matches, but it's always been during the course of the tournament. So I think the only reason I'm kind of uh, about the ending was, I, you know, Osprey is still going to be WCPW. Like even after it's the tournament's gone, he's still going to be here. I don't know if Kushida will. Now, hopefully he will. Hopefully I'm, you know, because once again, he shows up just once a month. That's still enough. I mean, seriously, you show up, you know, for a weekend a month, you shoot a loaded taping, you do a pay-per-view. That's good. Like, now your, your, your presence is felt. Cody Rhodes did the same thing. I just don't know if he's going to do that or not. And I was really wanting this to be something that would benefit a WCPW regular. Now, if it does work out for him, fine. And if it doesn't, and, you know, if he decides, like, he's going back to Japan or, you know, America or whatever, and he's not going to... Okay, but once again, just kind of like, uh, like it, it, it will really further Will Ospreay's storyline a lot more than it will Kushida, in my opinion. Uh, but the other thing was, okay, so the match is over, and of course, uh, Ospreay goes in there, you know, and they shake hands or whatever, and he grabs the trophy, and he presents it to him. And I kept waiting for this screw job, or, you know, this, this beat down afterwards. Because you got South Coast Connection, you got B Priestley, and you got Will Ospreay in the ring at once. And I was like... Don't do it. I didn't want to see it. I did not want to see it. Like I'm saying in my mind, like this is gonna happen, but I don't want to see it. And I kept waiting for it. I was like, man, this is this is not. I don't want to see this. Like we don't need another heel. Like Osprey heel. No, you gotta fight the prestige right now. I don't want to see. It. And so, but he does. And of course, B Priest goes to shake the hand of Kushida. And of course, he's very hesitant. He's just almost like you tried to hit me with a belt earlier. Like you literally tried to screw me out of that trophy. 
But they eventually, I think they shake and then you know they, they bow. And of course, uh, their other South Coast Nation, they all bow. And they all, you know, all four members, you know, Osprey and his group, they bow. And Kushida is holding the trophy high. And then the uh, feed just kind of ends. Which I don't know why. And I'm like, did they beat him down afterwards? Like after the, the, the pay-per-view's over, the event's over, the dark match beat down is just... Will Ospreay like, yep, reform my own group. Got my own Swords Essex back again. They start beating them. I'm not sure where the South Coast connection is from. I don't know if they're from Essex or not. But still, yeah, he's just like, got my group back. And I'm like, I just don't want that to happen at all. Like, it, it, what should happen is, you know, once again, Ospreay now, he he's proven he's not alone anymore. He has friends. He's got his boys with him. His girlfriend's back and all that stuff. And then it's like, all right, Hendry, we got some unfinished business. You got your boys. I got mine. Let's do this. And I hope that's where they take it now. That's, to me, that's the next logical step. Uh, so, yeah. that. But match of the night. Like, you know, ending aside my little... And the other complaint was, like, the S, uh, the SCC. That South, yeah, South Coast. They really added nothing to the match except for padding. That is it. Like, to me, I'm like, if they're going to be out there, they should really be out there for a reason. It really wasn't. They were literally out there to make me feel uncomfortable at home because I'm just thinking, like, man, there's, it's going to be a screw job. we got a screw job in the making right here. But they didn't. They were literally just out there to get hit by a high flyer. Be by their own person. Like, even, like, Osprey's just like, I'm going to hit you guys. Like, just, just so you know, I'm going to crush you guys if I can because eh, I'm the star. Uh, so, yeah, that was just it. You know, once again, I kind of, yeah, well, I, in my heart of hearts, I wanted Osprey to win for more than just my own personal, like, I want him to win, but just because I think it would have helped WCBW more. Once again, I could be wrong. If Kushida sticks around, perfect. Uh, but then the other thing was just like the SEC, or yeah, SEC added nothing to the match. So it was just, but other than that, the match itself, perfect. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was perfect. It really was. Uh, I don't think it's my favorite match, though. I will say, I think my favorite match of the tournament is still Mike Bailey uh, and Will Ospreay. I think that was to me, which is the match. Uh, but no, this match, fucking awesome. So uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, so overall, finals, the, the finals, the semifinal finals, I loved it. I thought it was really good. Once again, uh, doesn't quite have the impact that the quarterfinals have because quarterfinals, once again, just four matches, but they were all exceptional. Here, it really wasn't. There was, you know, no bad matches, but just a lot of shit I can kind of nitpick. And it's matches I didn't really care about. Like I said, the, the Mike Bailey uh, Penta match, I just, I, I had no emotional investment at all because I'm just like, this is just kind of like a loser bracket match and there's really nothing. It's, it's, it's exhibition, it's all this. At this point, I don't want to see exhibition. I either want to see something that's on further storylines or the tournament itself. This does neither. So I just, uh, uh, and then of course, like I said, Legero goofing off, which is kind of like, uh, but uh, other than that, overall, I enjoyed it. Oh, and the double Henry lock, I, I didn't like it. But uh, overall, I'm giving a thumbs up to the finals. And uh, yeah, awesome. Just awesome. Uh, can't wait. I can't wait till next year. Like, I know that's insane, but uh, yeah, hope they do it again. Hopefully they, they get it a little bit more condensed down instead of spreading it out for six months i don't just take a month off completely like I literally have but once again it wasn't their fault you know it was a it's a whack it's been a crazy year for wcpw a lot of highs and a lot of lows so the tournament reflects that as far as the scheduling but you know hopefully they'll get you know the second year they'll get everything worked out uh but yeah kashida congratulations like seriously that's you know either way i'm glad you want it good job everything else that goes with that boom uh, so yeah, that's all I got. Let me know what you guys thought about the tournament down below. Or I guess not this tournament, but the event. Let me know what you thought about the event down below. And how do you guys pick Kushida? Like that's one name I didn't see very often, if at all, uh, during the prediction. Like there's a lot of Ospreys, a lot of uh, Ricochets, uh, Saber Junior, you know, these seem like to be like the top names that everybody was kind of picking. Uh, and every now and then you get a pick for like Angelico or, uh, Takahashi, but I didn't. I don't remember any Kushida, so I'm sure everybody's gonna be like, "I had Kushida from the beginning. I knew it. I was on the bandwagon from before there was a bandwagon." But uh, either way, let me know all that stuff down below, and uh, don't forget to show this video that thumb and love. Share and subscribe if you haven't already. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff is down there. That's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.